How are you? How you doing, man? Okay, man. 49-year-old Arthur Booth is a career criminal, charged with burglary, grand theft, fleeing, and resisting arrest. You have actually three arrest affidavits. Reckless driving, damage to property, leaving the scene of a crash with serious injury. With no serious injury. I'm sorry, no serious injury. <laughs> OK. After questioning, Judge Glazer explains the terms of his bond. The bond on count one is 7,500. But the judge notices something familiar about this defendant. OK, Mr. Booth, I have a question for you. Yes, ma'am. Did you go to Nautilus for middle school? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry to see you there. I always wondered what happened to you, sir. Oh, my goodness. This is the nicest kid in middle school. Oh, my goodness. He was the best kid in middle school. I used to play football with him and all the kids. And look what has happened. I'm so sorry. Oh, my goodness. The surprise reunion between the two former middle school classmates is almost too much for Booth to handle. Oh, my goodness. Once a promising student, Booth fell into drug and gambling addictions that led him into a life of petty crime, resulting in multiple stays in prison. Oh, my goodness. Good luck to you, sir. I hope you're able to come out of this OK and just lead a lawful life. The reunion somberly no, concludes as Glazer my, sets um, bail at $43,000. Okay. Okay. Right. Oh, my goodness. You really, you, oh, my goodness. Booth is sent to prison for 10 months and then released into a drug treatment program. Millions of times since then, which was back in June. But now we'll see if this video also catches on because the other day, Booth was released from jail. His family was there. And so was Judge Glazer. And at this, their second encounter, she had a message for him. You got to your family, try and get a job, stay clean. You're going to do something good for somebody else. That's what you got to do. Call it a pledge to do better for old time's sake. John Donvan, ABC News, Washington. It's improper. It should just be one count. So are you working? Yes. How much money are you making a week, approximately? Approximately about 200 bucks a week. Okay, and do you own any property of value, a house, a car, bank account, significant amounts of jewelry? Yes. What do you own? <laughs> I own a lot of jewelry, all right, okay. as well as oh, go ahead. a car. Well, how, um, how, how, how much you, would you say your jewelry is worth? <laughs> it's not a joke, you know. We are not in, we are not in a club now. Okay, but it's you know. Hey, well, you of, see, you know, we are not in a, we are not in a club. Be serious about it. I'm serious about oh, it. You're being you just very, made me I laugh. I can see you're serious, all right. You just made me laugh. I apologize. It's all right. How much is your jewelry worth? It's worth a lot of money. Like what? Like Rick Ross. Huh? It's worth Ma money. Have you had any kind of drugs in the in the last 24 hours? Actually, no. Actually, no. Judge, I'll, I'll make it easy for the court, respectfully. <laughs> I'll accept the appointment at this time. No, no, I'm going to appoint you because you own a lot of mo substantial amounts of jewelry. You can go and sell your jewelry. Jewelry for a private attorney. What is the standard bond? It should be. It's going to be no PTS. Okay, five thousand on count one, and then the rest should be ROR. Bye-bye. Adios. <laughs> Come back, ma'am. Come back. Come back. Give me the paper again. Come one will be 10,000. Are you serious? I am serious. Adios. <gasps> Come back again. Come back again. Bring him back again. What's up? I believe I heard you saying to. Yes, I did. I'm not going to the. I, I believe you. Did you say? Yes, I did. Me? Actually, I did. Did you say that? Yes, sir. I did. Oh, you did say that? I'm not I gonna find you in direct criminal contempt. 30 days in the county jail. Okay, that's fine. Yes,
30 days in the county jail. I believe that she is represented by the public she defender. Is not no She's not being represented by the public defender. Okay. Just the defendant herself would like to make a public apology to the court for her ill-advised, inconsiderate behavior at the time of the bond hearing. Understand completely, and, and I apologize. And I hope you understand that because of that, you could be found in criminal contempt of court. And as I told you before, if I were to do that, you are going to become a convicted felon for the rest of your life. Do you understand that? Yes. And uh, do you understand that convicted felon? have a very difficult time in life. Yes. Difficult to get a job, difficult to maintain a job. Very difficult time. You understand that? Yes? Yes. You understand that if you were to say to your boss in place of employment what you said to me, you more than likely will be fired. Do you understand that? Yes? Yes. You understand that if you were to use that type of language or, or any other type of profanity with your school teachers or school instruct, college instructors, if you go to college, that would be extremely disrespectful. You understand that? Yes. So tell me what, what would you like to tell the court why explaining your behavior? Tell me what, how you feel. Well, my behavior was very no, irrational. No, my behavior was very irrational, and I apologize not only to the court and you, but to my family. And I normally don't act like that. So. Let me ask you a third question. Did you use Xanax? Did you take any Xanax Sunday? Yes, I did. How many? Two. Two? Well, Ms. Soto, <clears throat> I hope that you have learned a couple of lessons. Lesson number one is that drugs and put you in a very difficult situation. It is because of your use of Xanax, which I understand today is a body drug, can put you, can convert you, make you a felon, a convicted felon. It can put you in county jail like you have been. So what I'm trying to say to you is that you're not being given the opportunity to go to the improving life of Miami facility where they will try to help you uh, cure your addiction. Obviously, you have a drug addiction, and they will help you to cure it. But they will need your help. It is you who have the addiction, it is not them. So they need your cooperation and your uh, willingness uh, to be helped. Do you understand that? Yes. <coughs> and honestly, I should not even hold you as totally responsible. We live in a society where if you listen to music, every other word is a profanity. We live in a society where young people like you feel that it's perfectly okay to call all kind of names to their teachers and their professors and their friends, and they feel that's okay. That's like in the hi, good morning. And we live in a society where police officers in particular are abused on a daily basis, mostly by young people who believe that it is okay to call policemen all kind of names. That's totally unacceptable. 